Bunch of Crush Army, I am back. Where you at? Your motivation guy is back. The one and only Keith Allen. I'm pumped up because today I'm going to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips and tricks to make you a better Fortnite player. So let me ask you something. You know, what is the best way to beam an enemy if they're attempting to box up? Like, do you have enough mass to engage them in a build battle? Do you understand the questions that I'm asking you? Or are you like a little bit confused with the terminology? This is okay because we're going to be here today to really fix that problem. So before we begin, let's take a quick moment to go over the importance of learning certain terms. You know, like many other competitive games, communication, guys, is the key to success. And so if you want your teammates to understand you, then all you got to do is really be speaking the same in-game language. This makes it so much easier to coordinate, but also requires less time for any given request to go out. So in the heat of battle, man, where time is short, you need to be able to have concise communication. This means not wasting time on unneeded words. And I will say this, like these terms are not just useful in competition. They're also essential if you want to learn more about playing the game. Many pros and helpful channels will often use these terms during their guides. So you want to be able to familiarize yourself with them so you don't end up just getting lost trying to figure out exactly what they mean. So for our first word, let's start with an example of these terms at play. You guys ready for this? Let's go. So if a player has ever told you that they need to find minis, your first thoughts might jump straight towards miniguns. However, minis is just a shorter term for small shell potions. However, you aren't going to try to waste time like saying that mouthful. So try it. Say, I need a small shell potion. Then compare it to, I need minis. You get what I'm saying? You're going to spend less time using comms by using the term minis to refer to small shield potions. Not only that, but in doing so, you're also going to keep that chat clear for your teammates to give their own inputs or requests. The last thing that you want is everybody talking at the same time, using more words than necessary for something as simple as that. Let me ask you this. Do you feel like you can't get better at Fortnite? Like no matter what you try and do, be honest. Don't worry. Let me say this. It's something that even the pros go through from time to time. But do you know what the pros have? Have that you don't a pro coach <laughs> yeah teaching them every trick in the book to break free from their just stagnation you know, our coaches are available 24 7 and can teach you to break through your barriers to become the best fortnite player that you can be and all you need to do is visit the link in the description below today all right so one common term that you might have uh, really come across especially in competitive fortnite is the term sweaty you see pros describing players as sweaty or a playlist of videos showing a list of the sweatiest skins sweaty is essentially a term coined by the fortnite community to describe what they believe to be a try hard player this player may be skilled but will often start just showing off their advanced building techniques even you know when their opponent is clearly in a lower skill level because of this the term sweaty was born as if to say the player tried so hard to build quickly that his hands have become sweaty in the effort w key is a common term for describing a play style if you play on a keyboard then you most likely use the w key to move forwards right so w key you know takes that term and just really uses it to describe people who play aggressively by pushing their opponents in other words they are pushing pushing forwards and therefore W key. All right, so one of the simplest terms comes in the form of mats. Now, mats is a term for material. Uh, so, so when you hear a player say they are running out of mats, what they are referring to is their lack of building materials. This term is often used by pros. It's really one that you should use often. Now, what do you need when you're running out of mats? Well, the early game, you know, you can collect all sorts of resources from rocks and buildings or trees. However, once you start getting into the late game, there's going to be less space to do this and therefore less opportunities to harvest them directly. Not only that, but ammunition will also be harder to acquire since the focus shifts more into finishing off those last few players okay so here is where the term refresh comes really into play refreshing is the act of getting a kill and looting their inventory to replenish your supply line so players who have reached the end of the match have spent the entire game gathering supplies so this is an important reason that you need to be more aggressive during those late stages right and so this can be a great way of not only getting more mats and ammunition you know, really to keep you going, but also a great way of improving your loadout when there are no more chests available. All right, so rotate is also an important word that you gotta remember. If you're just starting out your competitive journey, then you might take this term a bit literally. That's usually the problem when it comes to learning terminology, right? But for those who really don't know, rotate is a word used in reference to just moving around the map. Knowing the word rotation is important since this is a big part of forming a strategy. Rotation dictates where you go, you know, especially after you land, you know, when you should go, and why you should go to certain areas. Rotation is not the same for every player. However, when looking up information on the best rotation strategies, you better know what the word means so you know what to search up. In fact, like that's just another good reason to really learn as many Fortnite terms as possible. I'm telling you, it changes everything. 
everything. It makes really looking up information and finding the right resource way easier. All right, POI is a short term for point of interest or locations on the map you know, named or otherwise. This comes in close relation to rotation since, you know, these are often places that you want to hit for looter mats. So a POI isn't always named, but usually, I mean, it has something to offer such as a high density of loot or just some other offering. For example, Retail Row is a great example of a named POI. The crash sites also have names, uh, but you know, they're just not displayed on the map. Meanwhile, the IO stations are small, unnamed, and uh, really harder to pinpoint on the map but they are small POIs that still offer the benefits of containing IO chests, therefore still fall into that category. So the storm is called many things, the storm, the circle, the border, and so on and so forth, right? But you know, one universally accepted term is the bubble. This is where the storm is going to be moving towards next. So let's just say that you and your team are out looting when your team leader says you need to start heading towards the bubble. Now, you know what that means now, right? And it just means going towards the safety of the storm circle. So baiting is a word which has a similar meaning in the game as it does out. Like if you're familiar with the term from you know other online lingo, then you know that baiting is the act of getting someone's attention and just luring them into acting in a way that you want. In Fortnite, baiting is a fighting tactic that can give you the home field advantage. For example, you know we discussed in a prior video that one common mistake that you can make is letting your opponent control the fight. And so if they're trying to engage you in a pump battle, then your best strategy is to stay long range to deny them that easy kill. This is just an example of baiting. You know, if he manages to force you into that pump battle when your skills are still really need more work, then he has successfully baited you. Okay, edits is another term that you should be familiar with, even if you're just new to the lingo. But you know, as a refresher and for those who are just squeaky clean and new, edits are not to be confused with regular building. Edits are all the small changes that you make to a structure you have laid down, all right? For example, a wall build is simply a wall. It can be used to block damage or give you some cover on the spot. An edit, however, is a change made to that wall, such as adding a door, placing a window, or just creating a space where you can peek or crawl under. Build battle is when two players initiate a fight, which leads to them trying to use builds in an attempt to gain an advantage. Here's the scenario, right? You spot an enemy, the enemy spots you, Suddenly you start building a ramp in an attempt to gain the high ground. In response, your opponent also builds a ramp and starts placing cones in an attempt to stop you. With this, a build battle has commenced and the player with the best building skills is usually gonna come out on top. All right, so what does it mean when a player boxes up? Boxing up is another building related term that refers to when a player uses their match to create a defensive box around themselves. This can be a great way of keeping yourself out of harm's way and it really gives you some room to heal, you know, block damage and force your opponent to focus on getting rid of the box. So in the same light as boxing up, box fighting is a term used to describe two players who have boxed themselves in close proximity to each other. Usually these two are just fighting for supremacy and dominance in their builds. Each player is going to try to gain ground while also trying to keep their defenses up. This means patching up their walls and trying to take the enemy's walls so they can edit in an opening and just really deal some damage. So this term can be confusing for newer players. Build battles and box fighting sound like the same thing. But box fighting is more of a, you know, subcategory of a build battle since it really revolves around specific styles of fighting, which really comes down to two boxes. Box fighting is the perfect segue to discussing another familiar term that you've definitely heard of if you've been like following other pro players. This is called peace control, right? Peace control is an essential part of box fighting, um, but it's just much more broad in terms of building. Peace control extends to every build that you make, right? And so if you box yourself up, then you own that box. This means you can edit it in as much as possible for any purpose you might have, especially in a fight. One thing to keep in mind, you know, for new players especially, is that, you know, opponents cannot edit enemy builds. This is why peace control is so important. When it comes to box fighting or build fighting, peace control is like your ultimate weapon, right? Like you're going to want to control as many pieces of your environment as possible, and this is going to give you more mobility and more opportunities to tackle your opponent. So instead of just, you know, finding yourself trapped within walls, you need to waste ammo on removing make sure to keep an eye. All right, so the next two terms on our list are very closely related, so we're gonna have them back to back. You may have heard other players refer to a weapon as a hit scan weapon. What exactly does that mean? Good question. Well, hit scan is commonly used when trying to tell two different types of weapons apart. Those where the projectile must hit your opponent and others where all you need is accuracy. 
All right, so let's just kind of elaborate on this. The sideways rifle is the perfect example of a hit scan weapon. Like when you pull the trigger while the crosshairs are on your opponent, you're going to hit, you know, if you aim right. In this case, there is no sequence where the bullets leave your weapon. Instead, the hit happens automatically. On the other hand, all right, weapons such as the bolt action rifle and crossbows are perfect examples of the opposite. In this case, the projectile must travel and hit the target in order for the game to register it, it is a hit. So when aiming, you're gonna need to take into account that the bullet might lose altitude during traveling and you're gonna have to adjust your aim. Since each season introduces different weapons, it's just always good to know like which weapons are, are what, so you can have an easier time adjusting to the new options. So tagging a player is a great strategy and a fantastic start to a fight. Hit scan weapons are great for tagging opponents, and so this is because many of them have the first shot accuracy. Tagging a player is landing that first hit, man, especially when they aren't aware that you have them in their crosshairs. Depending on the weapon, like you can do a vast range of damage too. Like some weapons can eradicate uh, an enemy's shields with a well-placed headshot. The point of tagging players is not just to engage in a battle, but to put them at a disadvantage right from the start. Okay, so another weapon related term is called beamed. Beaming an opponent is all about consistent accuracy. While getting the first hit is known as tagging, beaming is usually a term used to refer to multiple shots hitting in a row. This is most common with weapons such as the burst rifle, which fires three shots each time you pull the trigger. Landing all three shots, oh my god, it's gonna take a nice chunk out of your opponent's health, leaving them vulnerable. Bunch of quests army, whoo, that was it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it once again. This is your motivation guy, man. I want you guys to be great not only in this game, but also in life. I'm still here to encourage you. I haven't given up on you guys, man. Love you guys still, man. So keep going, man. The sky is, isn't even the limit. So, uh, you know, when you fall down, get back up never give up on your dreams that's gonna be it for today's video hope you guys learned something new if you did make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel because we got a lot of great stuff coming out see you soon peace